Hi, it's Jason from DrPremed.com. I want to talk to you about the MCAT and going through questions and problems because I'm getting a lot of inquiries from students right now who are preparing for the MCAT. They're taking it in a couple of weeks and they're just not scoring where they need to be and they're very concerned about whether they need to push back the test date or whether they think they should just go ahead and take the MCAT. Now if you know me and my advice to students, the MCAT's a test you want to take once and only once. So only sit for it when you're most prepared to take the MCAT because it becomes a part of your permanent record and it's the number one decision that ad comes use when they decide who they're going to admit to medical school. And so there's a lot riding on how you do on your MCAT. So make sure that you're really prepared for it. I get questions from students who are telling me that they're taking these commercial prep MCAT courses. They're doing everything that the course said to do. They're doing all the sign reading. They're doing all the questions, the problems. They're taking like full length practice exams and their score hasn't moved. And one student in particular was stating that, yeah, they're doing all of this and they just don't know what to do to make their score improve. And do I have any tips or advice for them? And actually, I was speaking to a medical student who was studying for their boards, and they were saying, like, even for their boards, they're having difficulty. They actually push back their board exam date to give themselves more time because they know how important these boards are for them in their career in medicine. So at every level of uh, medicine, no matter where you're at, you're going to have tasks, you're going to have exams that you need to take, and you want to make sure that you're the strongest going into that exam. So if you know you're weak or deficient in certain areas, don't take that test because there's just too much right on the line for it. But then the student was saying like how they had a classmate who was just out of this world brilliant when it came to tests and exams and the student actually is has matched into plastic surgery. That's one of the hardest specialty, specialties to match into. And what they were saying about the student, he was just brilliant and people would ask him like, how do you go about like preparing for your board and all these standardized tests? And he was saying, well, um, I go, I study like everybody else does and yes, I get in there and there are questions that I absolutely have no clue what the answer is or what the test writer expects of me, but I'm just naturally good at taking exams. And so what I do is I go through the test, I get to those questions, and I know for certain questions, there's a certain set of answers that go with those questions. So sometimes they'll just put in random um, answer choices that don't match with the questions asked. Asking so I can, I can go ahead and limit those, eliminate those immediately because I know that that doesn't go with the question. And then sometimes when they put two answer choices that are just way too similar to each other, I can then go ahead and eliminate those answer choices because I know that the test writer generally isn't asking me to differentiate at a level of that much detail where two answer choices are that similar. And so if you do that process, right now you're already knocked out two to three answer choices. And then from there, it's kind of making an educated guess, knowing what the test writer's asking in their question and what's most likely the presentation that you're going to have in that um patients that's a board board questions usually it's about presentations and what's the most likely clinical situation that a patient would have and so that's why you don't go chasing zebras you're looking for the horses that's what we that's one of the things they'll tell you in medicine go with what's most likely to come through the door of the hospital don't just chase the wild stuff unless it's a classical clinical vignette where they're going to put out like a classical thing that you'll never see in the practice of medicine but for some reason they want you to know it for your boards. So that's one thing to consider there. But um, as you can see, going back to the topic, if you're a student and you're struggling and things just aren't going well for you, you really need to, um, I say the first thing you need to do is figure out what's your basic foundational level of knowledge because sometimes it's just a foundational um, gap that you don't have that foundation in place and so the test is going to build upon that foundation and then you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble because you're just unaware or unsure what you need to do to get to the next level, the next step to answer those questions 
questions because there's a foundational gap there. And sometimes it's just maybe overanalyzing the question where you're thinking too deeply about things. And that's um, something that I catch myself doing a lot actually when, when when I take my exams I'm thinking okay that makes sense and then I'm like no that's way too easy there's no way that they would put that on the test this is like a medical board exam they're really trying to get to like the heart of the matter so that's just not what it is and then sometimes you change answers and it's incorrect sometimes you change the answers and it's correct but overall don't go into your exam thinking something's either too hard, too easy, makes sense, or doesn't make sense. You have to go into there thinking about what is most likely the correct answer based on the information that was presented in the question stem that you're working with. And then another thing with that in regards to like the most likely answer, you're Go with your gut instinct, which is usually the first thing that comes to mind. That's usually going to be your the best answer choice for you because then you're going to start thinking and you're probably going to think your way out of the correct answer choice. So don't change answers unless you have a solid reason, a solid backing for why you need to change an answer to something else because more often than not, you're going to change it to something that's incorrect. So go with your gut answer choice when you're um, going through your problems to get ready for your exam. That's one thing that students um, don't do all the time. And don't get flustered when you're going through a question that you don't know because you have about 10 seconds to get yourself calm and relaxed and figure out how you're going to answer th answer the question before your cortisol your um, stress hormones and everything kick in and then that's going to you're going that's when you get the blank slate and you just totally blank on a question that's just because you have too much stress going on and that's kind of one of the reasons why students will take a test and it's something that they definitely studied. They knew it before the exam, but then during the test, they just draw a blank and they can't get to the correct answer for the life of them. It's very frustrating. And then as soon as they walk out of that exam or hand in their exam, the stress just goes down and they remember exactly what the correct answer choice was, and they're so upset at themselves because those were easy points that they missed. And if that's the case, if that happens to you a lot of times, that means it's not an issue of your knowledge. It's that you're stressed out while you're taking your exam, and so you need to do things to make sure that you're um, not stressed out with, um, with your exam and one thing I tell students if you're the type that you know you get stressed out when you take your test what you need to do is get yourself in situations where you're going to be put under pressure and one of the best ways to do that is if you're still in class or whatever tell the professor that you have a little bit of testing anxiety so you want them to call you out in class because there's nothing like being put on the spot in class where you're going to have all those stress hormones going and everything like that and just be put on the spot and then have to think quickly to come up with an answer when all your classmates are watching you everybody's silent the professor's going to come on come up with the correct answer choice why do you think it's this why wouldn't it be that so that's what you want to do that's a good way to mimic um, a testing environment without actually taking the exam and having that stress level come through for there for you there in that regard and so again these are just some things to think about and when you're preparing for the MCAT and figuring out what you need to do to improve your scores on the MCAT and also if you're not improving one of the biggest things that you can do another takeaway is to take a practice test under um, real testing conditions and then go through that and go through that test and critically think about all the answer choices not just the ones that you got right or not the ones that you got wrong excuse me but you want to think about the correct ones and the wrong the correct and right answer choices for each question and you need to critically say okay why is this answer choice correct and why were all the other ones incorrect and then even take it a step further. What would I need to change in the question to make the incorrects correct? And also consider why would the test writer include these incorrect answer choices with 
this question because if, let's say if you have um, four answer choices on a test, one's going to be correct. So that means 75% of the other answer choices are incorrect on that on that question. So why are those 75% there? That's a 75% chance that you can work to learn from the test and really um, get the heart of what the test writer is asking and see how that applies to um, the question itself. And then you can also even go a step further. When you have those incorrect or the correct answer choice, you can then go back and read that section of material from your primary resource, your MCAT prep review book, and see, okay, I read this line, I read this paragraph here, but then this is how it was presented on the exam, and then you can see, make connections between um, what was actually presented in the book and then how it was actually presented on your exam. That's a good thing to do to figure that out. And I was actually talking to one of my um, a, a medical student a couple a while ago or whatever. I forget when, but that's beside the point. I was talking to them and I was telling them like, yeah, I take my board exams and afterwards I go home and I look up things that I that gave me trouble or I definitely knew that I got wrong and stuff like that and they were like Jason I walk out of those exams and I can't remember any questions I'm like well no not me I definitely remember every one that really struggled with me and I was looking up some data on like a 400 question board exam that I took about three days later I was still able to recall about 60 or 70 questions from that exam that just stuck out in my mind. Some of them were easy ones, some of them were hard, but one of the physicians told me that it's always a good practice if you can to like write down questions that you got wrong or were giving you difficulty while you were taking the exam, like if this is like a real one, and just look it up and just see what level of detail you needed to while you were reading or studying for that exam. So it could be a board or an MCAT to get a correct answer to choice or really to see how what you read and how the test writer then presents it to see the level of detail that you need for your um answer choices and one last thing before I uh, stop talking about the MCAT and study tip strategies is to use like an air analysis worksheet and so while you're going through your exam and you're grading yourself on what you got right what you got wrong is to kind of figure out did was it an air where you read the question incorrectly was it an air where you just didn't know the material was it an air where you were um, going too fast through the through the test there's a there's a different there's several types of errors that you commonly make on a test and you want to kind of start charting those out so that you can look and see okay what What's actually going on here that's preventing me from getting the score that I need or what type of common mistakes am I making on these exams? Am I make over am I assuming things? Am I not reading good detailed enough? Am I just getting flustered on the exam? Or is it just a thing where I just don't know that factual information that I needed to get the question question right? Or was I confused by what the question was actually answering? asking on me so those are things to consider and a lot of strategies that you can employ to ensure that you're going to do well on your MCAT just go through everything and again this is Jason with drpremed.com signing off with you with a lot of tips and advice for you to prepare for that MCAT or your board exam these are just things that you can do when you're studying to make yourself a better um, test taker and student for all these exams Jason with drpremed.com